This is lesson three continued and what I'm going to go over here uh, since we just went over the different layers is uh, lesson 3b, 3c and then uh, I'll, I'll touch on 3d a little bit as well. Uh, one of the questions I always get in this lesson is people want to make the grid bigger because generally when you get to 3b and you're drawing these objects here uh, you want to make them the same size and so as you can see when I look at mine my grid is all the way down here uh, the thing that you don't really have to worry about is that even though my grid is down here it still snaps up here but still for whatever reason people want to make their grid bigger so I'm going to show you how to go ahead and make your grid bigger I'm going to hit escape a couple times and I'm going to type in the word limits l-i-m-i-t-s hit enter and it says specify lower left corner the lower left corner is always 0, 0, as it says over here, the default 0, 0. Make sure you keep that at 0, 0. Or if yours is not 0, 0, change it to 0, 0. So just to be safe, I'm going to type in 0, 0, hit enter. And it says specify upper right corner. And mine is currently at 12 by 9. And all that means is it's going over 12 units and up 9 inches. Uh, so it's going over 12 inches and up 9 inches. So if you want to make your grid a lot bigger, maybe you want to make yours, I don't know, uh, 50, comma 50, and now my grid is much bigger. The problem is when you make it too big, uh, sometimes it can kind of zoom in and zoom out, like mine will continue to go away, because the computer will have trouble seeing it when I zoom out too far. So, uh, and, and that's pretty much what you do when you're done. Uh, and if you want to change it, limits and I always keep it on 0 comma 0 and maybe I don't want it 50 comma 50 maybe I want it 30 comma 30 uh, and now it's a little bit smaller uh, but still that is how you make your grid bigger is using limits and I would keep snapping grid on to draw these circles uh, to draw this this square right here as well as the circle uh, you do need to make sure that this circle when I click on this circle that each of those points touches the edge of that square so uh, if it were me, I would probably uh, draw the square first and make sure, you know, obviously the square is the same size on all four sides and then draw the circle. I might even draw a line through here and snap the circle to the center of the line and then snap it to that point right there. Uh, as far as Lesson 3C goes, this one's probably the most confusing of Lesson 3 uh, because you're doing a rectangle in a number of different ways. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the grid off and I'm going to show you how to do Lesson 3C right now. Uh, so the first thing it wants you to basically, what it's introducing you to is the rectangle tool. And so the rectangle tool is up here. You click on the rectangle tool and you can see you have options down here. And this is where it starts that you need to really pay attention to what's going on in the, uh, in the command window. Okay, so I have options here where it says chamfer, elevation, fillet, thickness, uh, and width. And you see the line or the uh, words, they have capital letters at the beginning that are underlined. Those are how you, you put in your options. So, uh, and you can also, I cannot put in any option and just specify a start corner. I can either uh, type in a point like 0, 0, or I can click right here to start my rectangle, and you can see my rectangle started. Now, one thing you'll notice is I'm currently on the hidden layer. I should probably be on the object layer. That would probably make sense. I could, I could have changed it later, but I'm just going to go ahead and change it now. And then I'll click back on the rectangle tool. And so the first thing it wants me to do, or wants me to learn how to do, is uh, the chamfer one. All right. So before I start a chamfer, I'm just going to draw a regular uh, 3 by 2 rectangle. So I'm going to start here. And then you can see one of my options down on the command window, I have area, dimension, or rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit D, enter, or, and I'm hitting D space bar. And it says the horizontal dimension. Well, my horizontal dimension is 3, enter. My vertical dimension is 2, enter. And there's my rectangle right there. And then I need to click my mouse and uh, my rectangle. There's my 3 inch by 2 inch rectangle. Now, if you want to double check this, you should have your dimension toolbar open. You can use this linear dimension guy right here. And you can click and you can click. And that tells you that's 3. I hit enter. And I click. And I click. And that tells me that's 2. Uh, you don't need to dimension it, but for those of you that want to check to make sure it's the right size, there you go. So here we go. Now we're going to do the chamfer one, which is this is the first one they asked you to do. Click on the rectangle tool, 
and you can see one of my options is chamfer. So I hit C, enter, and it says specify the first chamfer length. Well, it says 0.5 in the book, enter. Second chamfer length is also 0.5, enter. And now I'm going to start my rectangle. I'm going to start it here, and you can see that the corners have been chamfered. And again, it gives me the dimensions and, uh, and my options down here in the command line. Uh, one of the options is D for dimensions. And again, those of you not looking in the command line or the command window are going to get lost and you're not going to be able to figure this out. So again, my option is D, enter for dimensions. My horizontal is 3, which it already says that, so I'm just going to hit enter. My vertical is 2, it already says that, so I'm going to hit enter. And here we go, I click. And there is my, uh, there is my rectangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a tool right here. This is the move tool. I click on it and I can just grab this guy right here and now I can move him down and kind of out of the way. So there's the first one that's done. Uh, the next one is the fillet. So rectangle tool. Uh, F, enter for fillet. My radius according to the book is 0.75, enter. And I'm going to start that guy right about here and you can see it has rounded corners. Uh, this is where I can hit D, enter for dimensions. Again, this is down on the command window. That's where I'm finding out all of this information. And again, my horizontal dimension is 3, so I just hit enter. My vertical dimension is 2, so I just hit enter. And there is my rectangle. And again, I'm going to move this guy out of the way. I could put him over to the side or, or wherever I'd like to move. Again, to move, I just click on it. This is the move tool right here and then I grab it from somewhere. I could even grab it in the middle or I, I like grabbing it on a grip and then I can move it wherever I like. I could snap those together if I wanted to uh, but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just move them and kind of put them like so. So uh, that's basically how you do it. The only confusing thing where people get lost is when you click on a rectangle now and I start a rectangle you can see that the fillet is on. So if I wanted to have a rectangle that had 90 degree corners again what I have to do is start the rectangle tool and then hit F, enter for fillet, and you can see the radius is currently 0.75. I would have to change that back to zero, and then I could start my rectangle, and now you can see my rectangle has 90 degree corners once again. So I'm going to let you try and figure out the, uh, how to, the, to rotate. Uh, the, the way that you do it is exactly the same. You just have to follow the commands on the command window. And again, those of you looking up here in the pretty picture are going to uh, are gonna struggle with this because you need to be looking down at the bottom of the screen in the command window to find all of your options in order to make AutoCAD do or in order to make DraftSite do what you want it to do. So that's kind of an idea of how you get those done. And then finally, Lesson 3D is all about this house. This is just using different layers and being creative and drawing a little uh, little cartoon type house. Uh, using the different layers and having a little fun with the things that you have learned in this lesson. And that will pretty much wrap up uh, lesson three. So uh, this is pretty much what, the, what it should look like when it's all said and done with your name, uh, period, and date, and then 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D all completed, and that will be worth points when I check it. Uh, we'll see you again in uh, lesson four.